<laughs> right, that's the panel we're giving? Oh, okay, my bad. We got the panels mixed up. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be the panel about the Cuphead Show. Yeah! We're all very excited. I'm going to ask that you guys bear with me because I found out about a minute ago that I was going to be moderating this panel. So, we're going to see how it goes. It's going to be a good time. And without further ado, let's welcome the cast of The Cuphead Show! We had to cram a whole lot of seats in here, so it's going to be a little tight, guys. A little tight. We love each other. Shut up. Star Wars fans? No. Star Wars fans. No. You do have to turn them on. You do have to turn them on. Is mine on? How about yours? Yeah, it's mine. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. Oh, I put gum in before this. That was a bad idea. <laughs> okay, wow. well, I guess let's just go down the line and introduce everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, the cast of Cuphead! <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. You go first. Yeah, we're gonna do that. Hi, I'm Dave Blossom. I was the uh, executive producer and developer of the show, and I also do the voice of Benjamin. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Luke Millington Drake, and I uh, voice the devil. <laughs> Yeah, so, um... Oh, sorry, were you... I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Um, uh... So what are they for? <laughs> so the question was, like, our inspiration for... Yeah, what voice. was your process through creating your voice for your characters? Um, I remember Dave and Cosmo, if I'm not mistaken, like, kind of were sending me kind of, like, a lot of, like, mobster stuff from like the 1930s, right? Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. Is this Aquaman or Hello? Hello. Hello. There it goes. Uh, yeah, exactly. Like we were like, since it's sort of set in the 30s, we were looking at like a lot of old like archetypes from that, like sort of the fast talking wise guy. And that seemed, that seemed like a good fit for uh, Cuphead because he sort of thinks, thinks fast. He's always scheming, so that seemed like a like a, a good way to go. He thinks fast and doesn't really think about what he's going to say when he's thinking fast. So it just <laughs> he talks fast and thinks slow. I think is what it is. That's 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 a better description for sure. Yeah, that's kind of was the uh, inspiration, I suppose. Hi. Uh, wow. Uh, hi, hi everyone. Uh, for Mugman. Uh, well, you gave the uh, the note of Lucas Stello right out of the gate for the audition. Right. Uh, and and uh, I love Abin Castello, so I, I I had to add that. <laughs> uh, but what, one one thing, first of all, it's like time travel. It's like we got to go back in time to the 1930s and originate characters that never existed but now do, uh, and that's amazing. Um, but some of Mugman and some of the other characters 
I kind of got to, uh, I, I'm a, an Italian guy from New York, so sometimes my relatives sound weird. And I got to kind of insert a little bit of that in, uh, in, 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 in these characters, like uh, the eggplant bouncing, you're not on the wrist, that's my Uncle George. You know, so, uh, yeah, Uncle George. Uh, so yeah, so there is, uh, it, it was a cocktail of a bunch of people and uh, honored to be a part of it, you know? Uh, um, the, in, in auditioning, the breakdown said, Elder Kettle, crusty old curmudgeon. <laughs> so I thought of two people. First, my grandpa Frosty. My grandpa Frosty, who always had the line. We'd, go, we'd be playing up in the living room and he'd get mad. He'd go, get to the basement with that. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to be so. Um, and the other character is a character from a TV show called My Three Sons, uh, played by William Demarest, Uncle Charlie. Anybody remember that show? I do. <laughs> Which, you know, Steve, I, I just saw a tramp just took a dump in the hallway. I mean, it's he's this old, you know, surly curmudgeon. So that's, I don't know, Dave, was there... I, I would say, like, uh, with, with Elder Kettle in particular, we kind of had, like, Originally, we were thinking of a character that was like, yeah, I'm an old man, like he would be like that, but grouchy. Yeah, this and, sucks. Yeah, and then, and then Joe came in with that. And like we had all these other auditions where it was like, really old men. And then Joe came in with that, and we just were immediately, I was on the floor listening to that. So his idea was better than I, our idea in that case. He just really crushed it. Oh, bless your heart. <laughs> wow. Thanks. Um, I was very fortunate in the breakdown for the devil um, to have Tim Curry in the Rocky Horror Picture Show as the point of reference. And um, Tim Curry is actually the backdrop on my iPhone, so I was particularly <laughs> connected to that response. And having been raised watching that film every Halloween and, you know, whatever, my mom would want to sit down and watch it together. Um, I was like, yep, I know exactly what that voice is. And uh, sang... Um, I uh, would sing like Sweet Transvestite on the way to recordings <laughs> to get into the voice. Like, how did you? Ah, and that's how I get there. And I just like crazy, crazy lucky. There was just something. And also, I just loved how the devil was theatrical, over the top, attention seeking. It's perfect for an actor. So, um, yeah. And I just, it was just a complete stroke of luck. And also, actually, I will say one thing that was wonderful is that. We got um, drawings of the characters, at least I did in my audition, which is just so, so helpful to be like, oh, okay, I think he was standing there like this in the drawing. So I was like, okay, I got this guy down pretty well. <laughs> I'll give this, I have a good idea of what he could be. So yeah, very lucky. Uh, yeah, and, and just, just off of that, uh, right, Tim Curry from uh, Rocky Horror, even though uh, not not the best known 30s character, but he definitely seemed like nobody really inhabited the joy of being evil as Dr. Frankenfurter did in that movie. So it just like, he seemed to like savor it and just find that every being evil was so delicious. And uh, yeah, Luke came in and just, just inhabited that. <laughs> Perfect. And I think, I think also, this is sort of a fun factoid, wasn't that the very first audition you'd ever gone on? That was that was my very first voiceover audition that I had. Amazing. Amazing. I just came right in and killed it. The power of Hollywood, y'all. The power of Hollywood. I haven't booked since. So <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. it, to, to kind of interject, too, uh, we recorded all of these things separately. What? <laughs> but yeah, like all that kind of crackerjack timing and whatnot, that's all Dave and Cosmo and Sarah Sherman getting us to sound like we're next to each other. Like uh, normally, some, uh, there are different types of recording, uh, but they're the wizards that made it sound like that. It's insane. It yeah. sounds like we're, we're talking to each other. Frank and I, um, yeah. we met one time briefly 
I think it was, it was one, one of my first records, and yeah. I had ran into you, and they were like, hey, uh, meet this guy, he's, this is Mugman, we shook hands or whatever, mm -hmm. and I think we only recorded together one time. One time. One time, yeah. and that was it. Yeah. Other than that, we always recorded separately. Now we play Dungeons and Dragons together every week. But every every Monday, Monday, we play Dungeons and Dragons, yeah. me and Frank. We can just go on and we're kicking butts. Yeah, we, are. we really are. A lot of evil is crazy crits. It's weird. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that was also because COVID hit, like, right when we were in the very early beginning phases of, of, the, of the recording process. So initially, I think we, we had sort of, we were sort of getting everybody dialed in, so everybody felt like they really, like, were, were understood their character and knew exactly what it was, and we were on the verge of, like, bringing people in for more ensemble cast, but then COVID uh, hit, and so we didn't see each other in person for years. Yeah. Yeah. So we didn't yeah, see each all... other until the um, the cast party, which was like two years after we had started. Right. And we're like, hi, how's your COVID been? <laughs> right. <laughs> Wasn't it like we'd been together maybe for two recordings, yeah. and then it was COVID, and then we didn't like like Luke said, we weren't we didn't get back together again until all the recording was done. Yeah. yeah. So, but these guys were always incredible. Um, yeah, yeah, under those, especially under those circumstances, it, it really does feel like you guys are there and interacting with each other. It's, it's really great. But also coming from like, you know, we were all stuck inside, so I would, <laughs> I come in really hot to my, to my recording sessions being like, this is the only way I get outside throughout this whole thing. <laughs> and I remember like, doing like fully, because you know, I would like fully physical, like physical feel that sort of like stand there with my staff and record it. Dave would be on Zoom and just be like, yeah, that's great. Um, could you maybe just like move less? Because we're, we're picking up like your shirt and your hair. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'll try and hold still. Um, yeah. That was rare. You would move off mic a little bit because yeah, yeah Luke is that's very hard. physical with his performances. <laughs> So he's like really moving around and really dramatic. So sometimes he's missing the mic a little bit. <laughs> Just like talking to the wall, like, hey, okay, you gotta put your face more towards the mic if you wouldn't mind. Uh, yeah. a, a note that Dave and Cosmo would give me a lot was, hey, Mugman's right next to Cuphead, so you don't have to be screaming the entire time. <laughs> I just remember um, seeing them on the Zoom, and uh, you know, if I would do a funny line, I would see Sarah Sherman kind of chuckle, and I would see Cosmo grin, and Dave would be out of frame on the zoo. Yeah. And, I'm, and I realized he's bent over laughing, so you can't see him. And he comes up, and his face is red, and my job was done. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and then Henchman just came about because we already knew what we wanted for the devil. And this was a guy who was really sophisticated and uh, really thought highly of himself, um, lots of ego. And it just seemed really funny by contrast to have a guy that was like, bah, hey boss, <laughs> it was like his henchman. Um, and then it's like, if you have sort of a, a dumb guy that's your sidekick, you have to explain everything to him. So it's a really great uh, device <laughs> to let the audience know like what the devil's thinking because he has to tell it to this guy who's not too sharp. Yeah. So that's kind of where he, he came from. And originally I thought he would just sort of like in the beginning, he was just like, uh, boss, wakey, wakey. Like he didn't have a lot to say, but Deaky, our head writer, kept giving him longer and longer speeches and bigger and bigger parts. And I was like, hey, I'm not really an actor. I'm not, <laughs> I was like, whoa, whoa, what are we doing? But and it just kind of evolved, and he became uh, a bigger, a bigger, uh, more substantial character, which was really fun. Oh yeah. You guys are making my job really easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I was going to ask you but you guys, you guys have got this. I don't even need to be here. I can just turn you loose. You might never get off the stage then. then. <laughs> so we know that Cuphead, the show came. There was a game first. So coming from the game, from like a writer director standpoint. Did you play the game at all? How did you decide how you wanted these characters to be personalized as they got voices through the show? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I am. I have played the game. I'm terrible at the game. 
Uh, I would be sometimes like in interviews, people would ask me like, do you have any tips for playing the game? <laughs> And I'm like, my tip is you can watch it all on YouTube and you never have to play it. Just don't play the game. So, yeah, I was like, just watch it. You don't need to play it. But, uh, yeah, so that was my big trick was I, I watched all the playthroughs on uh, YouTube over and over again to really get a, get a feel for it. Because I could never get past, like, the vegetables. I think those were, like, the first. Yeah, it was, like, ridiculous. And even my son, who was better than me, I think he made it to Ribby and Croaks, but that was about it. Um, but, like, from watching it, I mean, it was such a great love letter to the 1930s cartoons. And, they, like, I mean, it really felt authentic to that period. Um, the Mullenhauers, the brothers that created the game, said they would often get asked... Like, where did you license these characters from? Like, because they seem so, they, they thought that they, they actually did pre-exist even before the game. Uh, so that was like, I mean, that's how like authentic they seemed to everyone. Um, and for me, I mean, I looked at it and I, I, you know, immediately understood who Cuphead was. He was a guy who, um, you know, like long for adventure. They live out in the middle of the woods with no one. I lived, I grew up in Arkansas, so I lived out in the middle of the woods near no one, except for my little brother. So like, I, I got that dynamic. I'm also a dad, so I was like, I know who Elder Kettle would be. It's like, if I had these two crazy guys and we were like cooped up in the woods, they would be driving me up the wall. So like, these things just kind of clicked. And then we just kind of worked out from there. Like that was our epicenter. And then it was just like, who would pair well with that? Like, how would the devil work with that? So it was just kind of finding personalities that seemed like they would be fun bouncing off of Cuphead and Mugman. Uh, if, can, can I ask a question actually? Of yeah, course. Yeah, Who's older? Oh. Yes. Right. Dun, dun, dun. So, <laughs> pull it together. That's a, that, that is also a great question. I always felt like it was good never to sort of reveal it, but according to the Moldenhauers, Cuphead is the older brother and Mugman is the younger oh brother. What? Oh. Some always picking your head <laughs> And I mean, I guess I thought, and without sort of saying it, but I'm saying it here, keep this between us. <laughs> I was the older brother in that scenario, and I really wore a cuphead too, where we were always like kind of coming up with games, like we'd go explore a, a, a creek or something and like have sticks that we were pretending were swords, so we would go have these like pretend adventures, but I was kind of the initiator in that. And then you pushed your little brother in the lake, right? That might have happened <laughs> a few thousand times. The worst thing I did was I shot my brother in the ankle with a BB gun and I yelled, snake. <laughs> and that, that that worked out great, actually. You are Cuphead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Has anybody out here played the game? Anybody? Any any takers? Oh. You poor soul. Did anybody finish the game? No, I did. Oh, somebody nice. even put it down at that. Congrats. That is super impressive. Very that nice. is super yeah, impressive. Yeah, so I'm. How? Oh. Yeah. I'm stuck uh, on the... Good. <laughs> nice, nice, yeah. I don't think I've gotten past the... Is it Bar Baroness Von Schweet or something her name? That one? Baroness Von Bon Bon. Bon Bon Bon, yeah. Bon Bon Bon. Yeah. Yeah, I can't, I can't get past that one. Anyways, how about you guys? Have you guys played the game? Yeah, I'm always watching. <laughs> so I know, I know two of these people's answers to this question, but I don't, I don't even know how to insert the disc. <laughs> the disc. <laughs> See, I hold. I'm Elmer Kettle. <laughs> I don't know if you guys. There's a video circulating around the internet of Frank and I playing, and. We kicked so much butt. Oh yeah, we're amazing. <laughs> we're so good. At so this game. really, we're yeah. so good. That's I mean, like you can see memory. it in the video. Yeah, we're watching it. One hundred percent playing. Yeah, it's us. Yeah. That's a, that's not how I remember it, guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah what, do you, what do you mean? Wait, what? 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 Have any of you guys uh, completed the DLC? Ooh. Really? So that, is, that is hard. 
How did it take longer to get through that or the original game? The original game took me like long. The DLC, I think, got a two days to have it. Okay. It's shorter, okay. though, right? It's yeah. still. Okay. Right, right. Luke, I didn't hear your answer. Have you, have you uh, no, I'm awful at it. Never. I'm really bad. Really bad. <laughs> Couldn't. Was like, you know, I, I spent most of my time just walking. I'm sorry. I, I played as Mugman. Oops. <laughs> I like blue. I just like the I blue. I also played as Mugman. So. But I spent most of my time just walking around the island as him, looking at stuff, being like, oh, that's pretty. Like the way they painted that backdrop. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I just can't win. I'm so bad at this game. But I think I made it to like the vegetables, and that's about as far as I can. I can't play it unless my brothers are home and one of them plays Cuphead because it, I will just die and then throw my controller across the room. There needs to be a god mode, but I don't know if the devil would be able to play that. <laughs> True. There's a conflict there or something. No, that was also the thing. It was like, I was like, I'll never get to see what the devil does. So I had to watch it on YouTube being like, yeah, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> Is the Root Pack the first villains? Are they the first? I think so. In the game? In the game? Yes. Let's ask her. She'll tell us. <laughs> Always relying on henchmen, huh? That's Norman. Right. <laughs> I thought the blue, wasn't the blueberry first? Oh, right, I thought it was the blueberry. blueberry. Was that the first one? If you could, you could start with like a loopy or um, a root pack. Galoopy. Okay, so it's the blueberry or the root pack, okay. But the running guns are harder, I don't like those. <laughs> Wait, you said you can never get past the vegetables? I thought you were talking about eating dinner. <laughs> dad, dad, get out, get out, dad. Jeez. Burned. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> now cookies for you. Yeah. That is correct. That is correct. That is correct. Right. Well, do we have any questions from the audience? Okay, so um, I would like to ask this because I know the Golden Tower Brothers said that the cockroaches are killed. But, like, exactly how old are they in their eyes? Uh, like, is that a that is another question that we intentionally left kind of vague. So like we don't we don't we don't really know honestly. We like the idea that they're and the, like kind of like SpongeBob the way SpongeBob seems like he's an adult but he's so like childlike and all of his interests are like ice cream and like playing jacks or like hide and seek. They're sort of the thing. They, they, they may be more adult, but they're they're stunted. Arrested development is going on there. <laughs> the question was, for those who didn't hear it in the back, how old are Cuphead and Mugman? I feel like they're giving 19 years old. You know, 19 years old. Like, <laughs> I got it all figured out, but you have no idea. They're serving 19 to me. What do, what do Cuphead and Mugman think? How old are you guys? I think I think we're the range is like <clears throat> eight to Maybe 12? Mm. I was I way off. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, 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 it sounds like we're like, you know, we took a major that wouldn't amount to anything in college and we moved back in with our elderly caretaker. Like, that's what was happening. Uh, 19. Yeah. 19. <laughs> but I, I, I thought, uh, I, I, I thought we were kids. But like, in that kind of like, car, like, fleishery old-timey cartoon version of a kid that plays poker and smokes. I mean, that's make more sense. Right? Yeah, in the 1930s, if you're eight years old, you're actually like 40 something. Yeah. yeah. You chain smoke, like, straight out. Yeah. For the record, the Cuphead brothers don't chain smoke. <laughs> <laughs> but now they're not allowed to drive Elder Kettle's car. It's truck, so... It's yeah. true. They, they <laughs> have, yeah. They, yeah. So I can you see them at 16. Right. The July if we, yeah. I can see him finding Elder Kettle's pipe and sneaking around back <laughs> and <then> like <laughs> smoking, like trying to smoke it, but getting turning very green in the process. Now, now, now I'm thinking about it. maybe maybe we are like maybe like 14, 15. Yeah. You know, 19. something like that. I can see that. Mm. What were oh you have, you question? Go ahead, question. Uh, 
They go to elementary school. Yeah, they go to elementary, and then like they go they're in a group with like like vendors on the like, main. They're like experts in this. But the question is, oh, how many times has Cuphead failed? That oh. Oh. And Mugman out of solidarity. <laughs> He's on his eighth time in the first grade. <laughs> Because any elementary school kids don't go to casinos. Not a good idea, not a good place for elementary school kids. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Bellagio. Question? Water features. Um, so, yeah, I do have one. So, my, mine is, um, when it came to uh, uh, developing, like, the, the show that the first thing started, like, um, was there like any like redesigns that, that you guys had any work to make it more like a TV show ready, or was it um, more just like okay, we have to get concepts here, like we can just work off of that? Is that kind of how uh, that kind of way? So the question is, did they have to rework any of the character designs for the show to make it more TV friendly? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I would say we did, actually. Um, we made, I mean, I, we wanted to stay really true to uh, what, what, the, what the game looked like and what the Moldenhauers had done. But in some cases, like, they weren't really doing, like, acting with these characters. So we had to really come up with, like, a whole lot of facial expressions. And in some cases, this meant, like, in the case of Chalice, if you look at her in the video game, she doesn't have eyebrows. And eyebrows are like really important for expressing emotion. So like we gave her eyebrows. Uh, we kind of, yeah, we would tweak their, tweak their proportions, but like mostly it was done um, in an effort to, to get a lot more expression out of their faces. Um, and in The Devil, he, he had like a ton of extra like hair, so we kind of simplified some of the hair so you could like really focus on the body shape. Sure. But just drawing all that hair over and over again, like he sort of got all these little, he's covered in those little jaggy curls. So we simplified that somewhat just to make it like easier to like put him in really expressive poses and you wouldn't get so caught up on all the, the individual details. That's cool. One last question. Sure. Uh, did any of the team, like, animators from, like, the original team jump over the hell out of the show at all? We had one guy. So, should you want to receive Yeah, I was just going to yeah, so they can hear it in the back. Yeah. The question was, did any of the original designers or staff on the game be part of the show? And the answer is, yes, there was one guy that was actually one of our animators that had worked on the original show. And he came over to help us uh, with some animation. I mean, we would love to have had more of those people, but they were actually in the middle of making the DLC while we were working on the show. So we were told to keep our damn hands off those people. <laughs> and they were like, don't you dare go near our people. And we were sort of saying the same, the same thing back to them, too. We had an agreement, like, don't touch our people. We need our people. In, in terms of the, just to go back to what you had asked at first, in terms of the, I mean, I didn't draw anything, but in terms of the design of Cuphead from the game to Cuphead in the show, I think Cuphead in the show is like way cuter than he was in the game. So I, yeah, I want to mention uh, Elder Kettle, which you guys added the spectacles and those amazing dilapidated slippers. Those slippers are, I mean, uh, and uh, the, the design of Mugman's face when Briny Beard's severed feet wash away <laughs> both haunts and elates me on a daily basis, and I love it so much. Yeah, oh my God, it's perfection. Have you guys watched the show? I know sometimes people don't always watch the shows that they're in. Have you watched the show, all of you? Oh, yeah, yeah. There's Several shows. times through. Haven't seen an episode. Yeah. <laughs> the episode There's a show? Is, is really a wonderful episode that you really should see. So if you have watched the show, either during recording or when you saw the finished product, what were your favorite episodes? Mm. I, I love The Devil's Christmas. Yeah, the Christmas <laughs> episode for me is... Oh my gosh. I see the Pisces Adventure is really good. I think also even just, but even just watching the, the pilot episode, I think, yeah. like seeing 
where we started and then getting to go through it. Just it was particularly emotional. I remember watching the first one because you know, like especially cringing and watching listening to myself sing. But like, I, but I just I think it was because it was like oh we did this right before COVID and then to go through all of that and like this whole show and this whole experience really was a saving grace for me. I mean it was everything. It was my everything. It was everything revolved around when I get that email of being like. You get to leave your house today specifically for a reason. <laughs> it was like, yes, thank God. So, yeah, but otherwise, like the Christmas recess. Was. Yeah, 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 it was. Yeah, I guess um, for me, I would watch a lot of them. Like, I mean, this sounds probably pathetic, but I would watch them a lot. Even after the show was over, it was fun to like re spend time with these characters. Uh, because for me, like, we're, we're working on it and building it, and like, you're always getting like, you get like 80% uh, of the scenes fixed. And then you're you're chipping away at getting all these little little problems worked out of the individual scenes. So finally by the end, you get it dropped in and it, it looks the way it's finally, it finally looks the way it's supposed to after like a year or a year and a half of working on the thing. So it's so fun to just watch it and like have it work the way it's supposed to. And finally I can kind of like concentrate on their performances more because I'm not, trying to fix all these little weird details and stuff. But uh, yeah, I've, I've, I've seen the show a few times over and it's nice and it's a nice to spend time with these guys that way too. Cause I'm just hanging out with them. <laughs> so I can always pop the show up. I got a lot of joy actually about uh, watching everyone's perform, everyone's performance. And then just imagining in my head what you were doing in the booth. Cause now we know each other personally. I got a lot of joy from watching that. I was losing my mind. Yes. <laughs> and also the artists, like, kind of pausing at some moments and being able to really appreciate, like, the painting and the backdrops and everything that was done was, I mean, that really was the best part, was the part work was just phenomenal. The backgrounds. Yeah, the backgrounds, the backgrounds like were just so Disney. cool. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Like, the screen yeah. What are your favorite episodes, though? You guys are <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I've, given, I've given up at this point. I'm just kind of letting you guys talk about it. Well, I have an answer. Okay, thank you. And I, and you. I say this all the time. My favorite episode, I believe it's called Dirt Nap. With Elder Kettle. I, 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 like, you know, in terms of, like, watching cartoons, not too many cartoons have ever made me, like, audibly laugh. But when Elder Kettle's getting blown up from one side of the room to the other, I audibly laughed. The animation on that was amazing. And what was the song? that was played during it. Thank That's you so much. Sure. Thank you. Flower Duet! Flower Duet? I heard, I heard a, a rumor that when, like, that Zoe Moss pitched that and sang that in the pitch, is that? I don't think that's accurate. Oh, okay. I think, it, I think that happened in the editing room, actually. Oh, no, no, I mean, we like, like pitch meeting. Anyway. Yeah. Right, I think we figured that out in the editing room, but as soon as like we laid that on there and like sort of, I think that's also when we knew we were gonna like turn it into slow motion. We were all on the floor laughing and then we even actually extended it. I think the first time Joe only went through like twice and it was like, this is too good. And that ended up being like five, five more times too, with just him going like, ah. Yeah, it was. It worked so well. Yeah, that was that was movie magic at its best. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Bless your heart. That's really good. That has my very, I told Dave this, my very favorite moment of the entire show that I've done is where I grab the copper saucepan, <laughs> I see my reflection, and I say, hey, Maybe I am disgusting. Yeah, Who drew? Was that Carl? Yeah, yeah. Carl Hadrika was the storyboard on that. That's yeah. That was him. He added the little smack smack he did. too. I knew I did. I did. <laughs> I knew I didn't do the smack smack. But um, well, yeah. you did the smack smack. But he did the little. He did. Oh, he okay. had the idea for it, but you oh, executed okay. it perfectly. Oh. That, that's my favorite moment. Uh, yeah. I just, I, 
That was a good one, because Kettle, you see every range of emotion. He's like, he's very vulnerable and sweet, and then he turns psychotic and tries to kill his own children. He thinks they're, <laughs> he thinks they're candy. I mean, he thinks they're, they're sweets. That, that was another episode, right, where he, he wants to zombie. eat his children. <laughs> he needs help. Anyone else have a favorite moment? Favorite line, favorite moment? Thank you, guys. Favorite moment? Favorite moment, yeah. I really liked, uh, I don't know what the episode's called, but it's whenever, like, King Dice is kind of down on his luck and (laughs) Cuphead's trying to, like, almost be, like, his manager. Kind of, like, that, I I really, like, I liked recording that version of Cuphead because I feel like that's, like, the most Cuphead Cuphead can be. So, so that's my answer. Yeah, you were great at that. Where he's he's kind of wheeling and dealing and a little little schmarmy. Yeah, true. Really elevated that for sure. I remember laughing so hard reading, you know, in, in the in reading the script, you know, where Kettle runs over the devil and he thinks it's an old stray cat, an old stray female cat, and just. Just doing that, I just, I, you know, it's so funny what Kettle said, but it's even funnier that the devil goes <laughs> along with it yeah. because he thinks he can get the cop. Yeah. I, I, I love uh, in that episode, I, I voice the goat in, in oh. that, that lives outside, oh, and awesome. at the end when the goat finally like gets the lap, what, what'd you say? Which so the, the fans <laughs> named the goat. Yeah. Did you have you heard of this? No, I didn't know about this. <laughs> <laughs> um, hilariously, it wasn't my friend who asked me like, what can you name the goat? And yeah. he said pitchfork just to like throw off the vibe. Yeah. And that's that was that was the goat. Pitchfork, the goat. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Again, everyone's missing the fact that I played that cop. <laughs> I played that B cop. B cop. B cop and uh, yes, and root packed. Absolutely. You play a lot of cops. Watch it again. You'll want to see it just for that performance. <laughs> Luke, do you have a favorite moment? You haven't gotten to say it. Oh, I just um, I love I love the relationship between Stickler and the Devil. Just watching yes, him yes. make his anger go higher and higher every time. Um, I think that was it. What was the one? Oh, and I really really loved doing the episode. <laughs> with um, with henchmen when it was like, uh, these are my finest demons. Like yes. watching that cast of demons come out every time, you just be like, ah, ah, ah. Like the frustration. It was always fun to play anything frustration. That is such a beautiful moment too. Yeah. The when they run out, it's got like this kind of like botchy sort of yeah. feel to it. They run in like, oh, it's so beautiful. I think look at the muscles on this one. Yes. <laughs> uh, extra. I was like, who doesn't know? Twinkle, twinkle, little star. <laughs> oh, oh, and then when henchman, then when henchman gets his holiday in the the episode oh, one, yeah. right. that's so cute. He gets to go on vacation. That's so sweet. <laughs> so sweet. I think we are just about out of time, but before we go. Let's say all your characters walked into a room and they didn't expect to see each other there. What would they do? If they all walked into a room, how would that go? Get out. (laughs) Okay. You you go, you go. My boys and my cat! (laughs) And who's the little purple chair? He thinks you're a cat, boss. <laughs> I swear to hell. <laughs> you can't say hell, boss. Don't, don't test me, henchman. Get off my pitchfork. Remember your blood pressure. I don't want to. <laughs> ah, here it is. Oh, it's a hardening of the artery. <laughs> Um, I'll never walk around and make sure that everyone's taken care of. Maybe I'll bake something beforehand with my jaunty little apron. And just, hey, would you like some pie? Would you like some pie? Would you like some pie? Uh, Cuphead? Cuphead, where's Cuphead? I think I would just walk in and scream. And like, <laughs> 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 would you come down already? We've got company. 
and then I'd leave. That's and smart. she.